Good morning and welcome to the video for Tuesday, May the 5th. This is going to be for fifth grade covering our lesson working with quadrilaterals. So to start off with, they give us a picture of a baseball diamond um, and we're talking about the seating. Um, so before we answer the question of what types of uh, quadrilaterals we might have, let's talk about what they are. So a quadrilateral is going to be a closed shape because we have to have four angles on the inside and we have four sides. And so as we go through classifying them, we are going to look at the measure of the angles, specifically right angles are going to determine certain things and whether we have sides that are matching and parallel. So um, to start with, a trapezoid is going to have at least one pair and I'm just going to abbreviate C. So we're looking for this word congruent right here. So I'm just going to kind of underline that um, instead of taking the time to write it out. So a uh, parallelogram is going to have two pairs. So we have opposite pairs that are congruent to each other and parallel. Um, a rectangle is going to be a special type of parallelogram with four right angles. And so this other part, I am going to explain differently. I don't like this particular thing. What they want is perpendicular for this. I'm not gonna take the time to write it out. Um, you'll see on my little kind of cheat sheet on the next page what I'm thinking. That was This was not the way I learned it because being having perpendicular sides means they come together and form a 90 degree angle. So it's basically two different ways of saying that you have a 90 degree angle. The way that I would explain it is we again have two matching pairs of um, congruent sides, but we have four right angles, whereas a normal parallelogram does not have four right angles. Um, a rhombus is going to be a special type of parallelogram that has two matching pairs of sides, but it, they are the same length. So we're going to have four congruent sides, and then our square is also going to have four congruent sides, but we're going to have four right angles. So um, looking closely at the chart, if we want to kind of pretend um, this is kind of close to being a rectangle, but maybe not. Um, this one could maybe be a square or maybe be a rhombus. Mostly what I'm seeing, if I were to judge this, um, I see lots of trapezoids. I see quite a few rectangles, especially um, going this way. If you've ever been to a sporting venue, um, most of the sections are going to be wider at the back and then taper off towards the front and be angled in kind of like this. Um, not all, um, some will actually be wider in the front and then angle towards the back. Uh, it just kind of depends on where you're at and what the purpose of that particular venue is. So, <laughs> excuse me. Um, the things that I would argue, we definitely have uh, parallelograms because we would have um, rectangular sections. We definitely have trapezoid sections and technically every single thing except for one. So when I was looking at this, I got a bit of a chuckle. It looks like this is actually six sides. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six sides here. So this is the one outlier, um, but everything else is a quadrilateral that is either a trapezoid, a parallelogram, a rectangle, or Possibly you could argue one of these, but I would say it's probably just these first four. Um, the book suggests that you could possibly have these as answers. I don't see any of the smaller ones actually fitting that description. So here is kind of my uh, little abbreviated chart. And so I'm kind of using shorthand, like this is a mark for angles. This is a mark for right angles. So all of our quadrilaterals are going to have four sides and four angles. A trapezoid is going to have at least one pair of parallel sides, and a parallelogram is always going to have two pairs of parallel sides. A rhombus is going to have two pairs of parallel sides, but they're all going to be the same length, which I forgot to put my little asterisk there for that, um, but no right angles. 
a rectangle is going to have two matching pairs of parallel sides um, and for right angles, a square is going to have two matching pairs of parallel sides, but they're going to all be the same measure. So you're going to have four sides that are the same length and four right angles. So that's kind of the way that I learned how to do it. I hope that helps for you, um, especially since I don't particularly like using perpendicular to talk about how the lines meet, because we're not really talking about the sides at this point. Um, in a meaningful way. If we're going to say it already has a right angle, we don't need to say that two different ways, uh, in my opinion. So let's take a look at this shape. So um, if we were to actually be able to measure this out, we are going to have a slight difference between the length of this side and this side compared to this side and this side. So I'm going to have um, two pairs of congruent sides. Um, I am not going to have any right angles how many pairs of parallel sides? We have two. So looking at our thing, we are going to have a parallelogram. And we are going to have a trapezoid because we have at least one matching pair of sides. Uh, we do not have all four sides the same uh, length to be able to count as a rhombus. Uh, and we don't have right angles to count as the other two. So um, I'm going to try to, as quickly as possible, go through the rest of these. Uh, number two, uh, we're, all of these, if it asks for quadrilaterals and option, every single thing in this lesson, uh, we're not trying to trick you, are all going to be quadrilaterals. So you can go ahead and assume that that's going to be there. Um, so I have at least one matching pair of sides. So I will also have a trapezoid here. I'm going to have a parallelogram because I have two matching pairs of sides. I will have a rectangle because I have four right angles with two matching pairs of sides, um, which means I am not going to have a rhombus and I'm not going to have a square because all four sides are the same length. So our first four options here would all go for this. Uh, number three, we're going to have a quadrilateral that is a trapezoid, and that is the only two ways that we can classify that. Um, we don't have two matching pairs of sides uh, to be able to count as a parallelogram, rhombus, rectangle, or square. Uh, number four, we have a square, which means we actually meet the requirements for all six of these. Uh, so a rhombus, again, by itself, I'm mentioning uh, no right angles. There is, the, if we are talking about a square, um, then we can also classify that as a rhombus. I use this as kind of a shorthand thing. Normally, if we're going to have something that's labeled just a rhombus, it's not going to have any right angles. So that's why that's included there. Uh, number five, we are going to have a, um, that one, trapezoid, um, quadrilateral trapezoid. Um, we only have one matching, uh, or sorry, one, a uh, pair of parallel sides, they are not matching in uh, length. Uh, number six, we are going to have a trapezoid. So we are going to have a quadrilateral trapezoid parallelogram um, that also counts as a rhombus. Sorry. So this is our primary one, and then we can work our way backwards from there. Uh, number seven, we are going to have a quadrilateral that is also a trapezoid, that is also a parallelogram, that is also a rhombus. We do not have any 90 degree angles, so that eliminates being a uh, rectangle or square. All right, so I'm jumping back in uh, kind of uh, towards the end of the video. We are looking currently at um, the homework problems. Um, so I went ahead and made a couple notes and now I'm going to uh, talk about the homework problem. So again, we're looking uh, for evens on the front and then um, on the back, we are looking at number one and number two. So uh, we talked about during the lesson about our uh, kind of little uh, flow chart or cheat sheet um, that tells how many pairs of parallel sides we have. So that one should be really easy. Let's take a look at number two. So I have a rhombus here. I also have a rhombus on the previous page. And so uh, the part where I lost some time is because i um, trying to use my uh, cheater tool where I can measure the angles and draw straight edges. 
uh, likes to uh, resize my entire screen. Um, so I drew lines through the middle of the shape. It wasn't exactly perfect, but it looks like this particular rhombus does have four angles that are reasonably close to each other. So if I were to um, take a look at the angle going this way, I would get a matching angle here. And then if I go from here to here and here to here, it looks like I would have a similar matching pair of angles. So um, to compare that to the one that we have here, here we have another example of a rhombus, spoiler alert for uh, <laughs> Uh, one of your answers for number two. But on this one, you can clearly see these two angles are gonna be the same measurement. These two angles are gonna be the same measurement, but both of these would be very much acute angles, whereas both of these are going to be obtuse angles. So that should give you a suggestion on how number two uh, on the back should work. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in Google Classroom if you're a Risen Christ student. Uh, hopefully I've done a good job of explaining it um, so that you don't have any questions, but if you do uh, and you still have any questions after the homework, uh, please uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, if you're watching this and you're not one of my students, I apologize. Um, I don't have any way with the comments uh, for the rating of the video to be able to uh, open that up for questions, but please feel free to reach out to your classroom teacher uh, to ask for any help or additional practice with this. So I uh, hope the video was helpful. Have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.